Hey everyone, welcome to Up All Night DIY. I'm Monica, thanks for joining me. Today I'm participating in the Fun Time Friday collab, hosted by my friend, the lovely and talented Tiff of Broke Girl Aesthetic. I'm making this super easy Easter crate. Let's get into it. Using my squirrel saw, I cut the simple bunny head from half inch plywood. From top to bottom, it measures 14 inches. The ears are 10 inches at its widest. The face is seven and a half inches wide and the neck is four and a half long and wide. I made mine from wood, but you could make this from foam board too. So I got this wood crate from Michael's for $9. It measures 12 inches long by nine and three quarter inches wide and four and a half inches deep. So it's a nice size. I'm double checking here to make sure that the head is in scale with the crate and I'll attach it to the inside once everything is painted. Okay, I started painting, but while the color is pretty, the coverage wasn't. Looked more like a stain than a paint. So I switched my paint to Ceram Coat Pop Pink. The results were far better. I won't need nearly as many coats. Two will do it. I applied two coats to both sides of the bunny and to the crate, including the inside. Now that it's fully painted and dry, I've cut a stencil of the word Easter with my silhouette, which I'll apply to the front of the crate. I always use regular old contact paper that I pick up at Target for like five bucks a roll whenever I'm doing stencils. This is far more budget friendly than stencil vinyl. I've also cut a name stencil for the bunny. To get clean lines from my stencil, I'll pounce more of my base color pop pink over the lettering. You've seen me do this with Mod Podge, but I wanted to show that you can do it this way too. And I'll repeat the process with my Easter stencil. When the pink paint is dry, I'll pounce over the lettering with white. Before the white paint completely dries, Appeal and reveal. With my weeding tool, I'll remove any remaining vinyl. Apparently, the vinyl wasn't fully adhered in spots, so some paint got beneath it, but that's okay. Easy fix. I'll clean up any bleeding with pop pink and a liner brush. With floating medium and hippo gray, I'll add a drop shadow to the lettering. I'll load my brush with floating medium, working it into the bristles. I'll scoop a very small amount of paint onto one corner and I'll stroke it on my plate to load the paint into the brush. I want the shadow to be thin and close to my letters, so I'm using a small flat brush. My shadow will fall to the left of the strokes of my letters. You can always look for examples of shadowed lettering on the internet to use as a guide. I'll add my shadow around all the letters, reloading my brush as needed. I'll turn my project as I go to make it easier to get to this spot that I want to paint. We'll jump ahead here for time's sake. And I'll continue the shading to the left of the letter on the word Easter too. Here I'm coming in with just some float on my brush to kind of soften my stroke a wee bit. I felt like the line was a little too 
harsh. So I'm just kind of feathering it a wee bit. Now, I'll shade around the edge of the bunny and the crate using floating medium and ceram coat watermelon. I load my brush the same way as I did with the hippo gray. I gently stroke on the watermelon, keeping the paint side of my brush to the edge of the bunny. This is such a simple way to add some depth and interest to this project. You could dry brush too, but you know, I love my floating medium. I also shaded the sides of the crate too, but somehow I didn't get that on camera. But it's the same general premise. I love how this medium helps the paint to feather out. I think here you can get a good idea of how the float medium helps the paint give that ombre effect. Here, I flip my brush around so that the paint side of the brush is running along that paint that I've already laid down. As you can see, I went around each slat of the uh, crate and floated some shading around those slats as well. Before assembling, I'll spray with clear matte sealer. Assembly is super easy and quick. I use some wood glue on the neck of the bunny and a wee bit of hot glue for an instant grab. I'll pop the bunny head into place and I'll use a clamp to hold it there for a few minutes until it sets a wee bit. The cloth is a buffer so the paint isn't damaged. I'll add a couple of screws for extra support. I'm using one inch screws for this, but first I'll drill some pilot holes. And I'll add my screws. That's it. So simple and so cute. Please be sure to check out Tiff's channel as well as the playlist. Links are in the description box as is the list of supplies. This was a quick one today. I hope you liked today's project and I hope you'll give it a try. I think it's really cute. Stay creative, my friends. Thanks for hanging with me. See you next time. Up all night with Monica.